the Messiah's reign. We are to look forward to the time when the Lord Jesus Christ will rule on earth and there will be world peace. Here's Gene. Isaiah lived during a period in Judah's history where people were turning away from God. We see this really throughout the book. And what he wrote here had to be very painful. Now remember, he lived in Jerusalem. Jerusalem was his city, his hometown, as it were, where he grew up, where he raised his family, his two sons. But notice what the Lord inspired him to write. The faithful city, what an adulteress she has become. Think of that. And when you see adultery used as a metaphor of Israel or Judah, it means being being unfaithful. Now, literally, they became unfaithful in terms of their morality, but they became unfaithful to God, the Father, the one who called them. And they went after false gods. And the Old Testament refers to that as spiritual adultery. What an adulteress she has become. She was once full of justice. Righteousness once dwelt in her. But now, murderers. And that's literal. One of the kings that came next was Manasseh. After Hezekiah. And Isaiah's life flowed over into his reign as well, though it's not mentioned at the beginning among those four. And we read in the Bible that during the time of Manasseh, blood flowed through the streets of Jerusalem because of murder and this kind of horrible activity. In fact, some believe that this is when Isaiah himself was a martyr. Uh, Some say, traditionally, he was uh, sawn in two because of his commitment to the Word of God. And again, it's hard to even believe. And these are the people of God that are bringing this kind of evil on those who are faithful, trying to proclaim the truth of the one who said, come and let's talk about this. Though your sins are as scarlet, they can become as white as snow. And so... Here he's writing, Isaiah is writing about the present situation. But he gives a future prophecy that is amazing, phenomenal. In Isaiah chapter 2, verses 2 to 4, In the last days, the mountain of the Lord's house will be established at the top of the mountains and will be raised above the hills. And here he's talking about the temple of the Lord in Jerusalem. Has that happened? Has it ever happened? No. Not in the sense. The temple's been rebuilt. But notice what else he says that goes along with this. All nations will stream to it, and many people will come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. Has that ever happened? All nations? Never. What is in existence today? Israel today is surrounded by nations that want to wipe them off of the face of the earth. They're not coming to Israel. They're not coming to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. This has never been fulfilled. Will it be fulfilled? Yes, it will. Notice we read on. He will teach us about His ways so that we may walk in His paths. This is the will of God that is spoken. From the house of the Lord in Jerusalem. For instruction will go out of Zion and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Zion refers probably to the whole area in Jerusalem. The temple of the Lord is built there on what now is the Temple Mount, which is occupied with a mosque. Someday, according to the future prophecies, the house of the Lord will be rebuilt probably right in that area. Some debate that it doesn't have to be exactly there because the dimensions are not 
accurate in terms of where, uh, where the mosque is located, that great golden dome, that it could be built somewhere close to that. Some say it's going to be built exactly where that is. So, uh, that mosque is. So, there's some mysteries, but we know that someday these prophecies will come true. He will settle disputes among the nations. Whoa, the nations surrounding Israel? God is going to settle those disputes because Jesus Christ will be reigning on the throne of David. He will settle disputes among the nations, provide arbitration for many peoples. They will turn their swords into plows, their spears into pruning knives, and nations will not take up the sword against other nations, and they will never again train for war. Has that ever happened? No. But someday it will. Now, the Apostle John projects ahead and gives us a little more information, I think, about this period of time. And it's called the Millennial Kingdom. And personally, I believe in a literal Millennial Kingdom. There are some of my good brothers in Christ believe that the promises of Israel um, are fulfilled in the church, and today we're living during this Millennial time. But I have a difficult time fitting in all the other information and comparing it with what's happening today in our world. And in doing so, they do away with all the promises, in a sense, that were made to Israel. It's called replacement theology. I believe through Scripture, God has a plan, a future plan for Israel. And then for the whole body of Christ and all believers. And here's what John saw. Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven with a key to the abyss and a great chain in his hand. He seized the dragon, that ancient serpent, who is the devil, and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. Now, if Jesus Christ is going to be reigning on the throne of David in Jerusalem, and all the nations are coming for help and guidance and wisdom, then uh, Satan is not going to be that active, and the reason is he's bound. And it says a thousand years. That's why we call it the millennium the millennial reign of Christ, that thousand years means a millennium. And I personally believe it'll be a thousand years. I have no other reason to believe that it's not literal. He threw him, that is God threw him, that is Satan, into the abyss, closed it, put a seal on it so that he would no longer deceive the nations until the thousand years were completed. After that, he must be released for a short time. Now, let me say something here that I, I think is, is very helpful and understanding the earth at that time. I believe it will be a renewed earth. Something's going to happen when Jesus Christ returns the second time, sets His foot there on the Mount of Olives. The mountain is split. There are going to be some geographical changes. And the interesting thing is that one of the prophets says that they'll be fishing out of the Dead Sea. If you know anything about the Dead Sea, there are no fish in that sea. There's nothing alive in the Dead Sea. There's going to be some kind of incredible reconfiguration. I like to call it a renewed earth during this period of time. Now, there's going to come a new heavens and a new earth. But what we're looking at here is prior to that event, when finally there will be eternity, a new heavens and a new earth. Look at this question that relates to uh, this principle, since we have access to the total biblical story. And again, isn't that significant? That we live during this period of time. Since we have access to the total biblical story, what are some of God's future plans for humanity that we can understand much more clearly than Isaiah and other Old Testament prophets? Well, here are just a few that I've noted. One is we can differentiate between the first and second coming of Christ. And that's something that Isaiah probably didn't understand. It's like uh, two mountain peaks, and you've probably heard this illustration. When you look at these two mountain peaks in a distance, you don't see any gap between them. In fact, they look as one. Until you get up and you see there's a huge valley between those two mountains. But at a distance, they look as one. But actually, 
what Isaiah didn't see was what really happened between those two mountain peaks, the first coming and the second coming. And that relates to the church, the body of Jesus Christ. And that leads me to another observation. We understand the mystery of the church. Isaiah didn't understand that, as far as we know. He did not understand this 2,000 years plus, whatever, of the body of Jesus Christ, the family of God, both Jews and Gentiles, as the family of God, the body of Jesus Christ. We understand that. We also understand that the church will be removed someday, probably introduce us to what Daniel calls the 70th week, and you can go to Daniel and look at the principles related to that, where God once again picks up His plan for Israel once the church is removed from the earth. We can understand that from the New Testament. Some details we don't understand. Sometimes we get a little overzealous, I think, in trying to interpret it all. But we can have a general understanding the church will be removed. It's quite clear. And then we can understand that God will fulfill His promises to Israel. I personally believe that all the promises that God made to Israel will be fulfilled in the future. And particularly during this millennial reign of Christ. And of course, the other thing we understand that I don't think Isaiah understood is we understand eternity. We understand that there's going to be, eventually, a new heavens and a new earth which will be the place of God's abode for eternity. So here's the principle. We're to look forward to the time when the Lord Jesus Christ will rule on earth and there will be world peace. And one of the reasons we can look forward to that, which boggles my mind, is the Bible teaches that those of us who know Christ, a part of the family of God, will be ruling and reigning with Christ during this thousand-year reign. Then, of course, will come the end. And then we're ushered in to eternity.